So name and identify angles. Two angles are vertical if they are opposite angles formed by the intersection of two lines. Vertical angles are congruent or have the same measure. Well, if we're looking now, it's saying angles one and three are vertical. Well, here's angle one, and then angle three. Those two are vertical. You can notice how they are opposite angles formed by the intersection of two lines. And also, two in angle four are opposite angles that are formed by two intersecting lines and have the same angle measure. Now, the symbol here, we have angle one is congruent with equal sign with a little squiggly to angle three, and angle two is congruent to angle four. Now, two angles are adjacent if they share a common vertex, a common side, and do not overlap. So adjacent angle pairs are one and two, We have 2 and 3, we have 3 and 4, we also have 4 and 1, all adjacent angle pairs. You can name an angle by its vertex and by its points. Name the angle shown at the right, then classify it as acute, right, obtuse, or straight. Well, the vertex as a middle letter and a point from each side is one way to name the angle. So we have the vertex y, and then we could go x, y, z. We could go z, y, x. We could use the vertex only y, or we could use the number one. All our ways of naming this angle. Then, the angle is less than 90 degrees, so it's an acute angle. Now we're asked to name these angles in four ways and classify each angle as acute, right, obtuse, or straight. Well, we could start with the vertex. It might be the easiest way to start. The vertex is angle B. We could use the number angle 2. And then we use the vertex as the middle letter. So we'll go angle A, B, C. Or we could go the other way, angle C, B, A. And is this right, acute, obtuse, or straight? Well, it looks to be 90 degrees, so this is a right angle. What about B? Well, we could call this angle S or angle 3. And then the vertex needs to be in the middle, so we could call this angle R, S, T, or the other way, T, S, R. Notice how that vertex is in the middle. Now this is an example of an obtuse angle as it is larger than 90 degrees, but not 180. Angle C, we can notice is a straight angle. A st so we'll do that first actually this time. You can see where it's a straight angle. We can call this angle M, since that's the vertex. We could call it angle 4, since that's the number. We could call it angle L, M, N, or the other way, angle N, M, L. Again, noticing how the vertex always goes in the middle. Identify a pair of vertical angles and adjacent angles in the diagram at the right. Justify your response. We're told here, since angle 2, which is here, and angle 4 are opposite angles formed by the intersection of two lines. They are vertical angles. Since angle 1 and 2 share a common side and vertex and do not overlap, they are adjacent angles. So now, do we have that? Refer to the diagram in example 2. Identify different pairs of verticals and adjacent angles and justify your response. Well, we're given 2 and 4 already as vertical, and there's only one other pair. And those are angles 1 and 3. These are vertical angles. Because, and we'll use similar wording here, angle 
1 and angle 3 are opposite angles formed by the intersection of two lines, which is the definition of vertical angles. So angle one and three are vertical, as we can look here, because they are opposite angles formed by the intersection of two lines. Now, what about adjacent angles? Well, we have a couple to pick from. Let's just pick for this one angles two and three. Angles two and three. You can see they have the vertex and they are next to each other. So these are adjacent angles because angle two and angle three share a common vertex. a common side, and do not overlap. Now we can also find missing angle measures. Once we identify what the angles are, we can also then use that to find missing measures. What is the value of x in the figure? Well, here we have 2x plus 2. Here we have 130. We know that this angle here with the 2x plus 2 and this angle here, 130, as they are opposite from each other and share a vertex, we know that those are vertical angles. And since vertical angles are congruent, we can set an equation. 2x plus 2 equals 130. We can solve that equation and get x equals 64. So we can use that to help us find the value of y. As you can see, 3y minus 10 and 50 are vertical angles as they are opposite from each other and share a common vertex. So we can say 3y minus 10 is going to equal 50. To solve the equation, first add 10 to both sides. That cancels. We're left with 3y equals 60. Lastly, we can divide by 3 on both sides of the equation, so that cancels. And we're left with y equals 20. So the value of y is 20. What is the value of x shown in the sidewalk? Well, the angle labeled 115 and the angle labeled 5x are adjacent angles, and they also form a straight line. You can see where the 115 degree and the 5x form this straight angle. And the straight angle is 180 degrees. So what we can do here is say 115 plus 5x equals 180. And then solve the equation. We subtracted 115 from both sides, then divided by 5 to get x equals 13. Now, what if we had something like this? Where we had 110 degrees and, say, 10x degrees and we wanted to find the value of x. Well, again, just like this example above, 110 degrees and 10x degrees are adjacent and they form this straight angle. So we can say 110 plus the 10x degrees is going to equal 180 degrees. And if we subtract 110 from both sides, We're left with 10x equals 
70. Then divide by 10 on both sides. That cancels, and we're left with x equals 7. So the value of x there is 7. That is it for this first lesson in our chapter on classify angles.